What's up, everybody? Welcome to Philly Insider Podcast. We got weekly pick em Wednesday for you. I got Hunter with me. That's right. I pointed the right direction this time. And it we wasn't got... right on mine. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, my goodness. You just looked really stupid on mine. I'm sure it'll be good on the recording, but it looked really bad on mine. That was hilarious. The pointing never <laughs> works. Well. It never works well. But we're here with weekly pick them Wednesday hey, like, for I'm you. I'm pointing the wrong way on yours, but this is right on mine. Okay, okay. We got screen and verses out here. It's fine. Anyway, for the third time, <laughs> welcome the sports content you guys love. Welcome to Philly Insider Podcast, guys. We got weekly pick them Wednesdays for you. And let's get it started with our locks, fam. I'll get started with mine. I got the Chargers getting the lock at the Eagles, man. I got them locked into this win. They're coming off an embarrassing loss to the Pats, and we're coming off a big win versus the Lions that honestly probably put a lot of guys in a false sense of security over there on that coaching staff and on just the player side. So I just think we're ripe for we're ripe to get caught slipping in this game. Give me the Eagles for my lock. I'm just kidding. I'm taking the Bills over the Jags. Urban Meyer has got no shot against another Alabama of the NFL. Um, you know, to quote him, the Bills, I mean, even if it's a close game and the, the Jags like show some fight and kind of show up, they're not going to be able to close it out. The Bills are built for this. They're, they're just a far, far superior team. I got you, fam. And now we go to the upsets. And, bro, I'm going to have a little fun with my upset. Got to be real with you. Magic Mike White, fam. Shout out to Pat McAfee Show for that nickname. Him and the Jets going to face the Colts in Indianapolis. Doug, I'm doing the, this call is just for the meme, man. No other reason this one is just for the meme, but I'm putting it on my record, fam. I'm taking the Jets at the Colts just off Magic Mike White. He's going to get the second dub in a row, throwing for 600 yards, eight touchdowns, no interceptions. He's going to rush for another three touchdowns, and he is officially going to throw Zach Wilson out of a job. So who's your real upset? Nah, fam. That's it. That's what I got. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And again, I said this, and we, we re-recorded this the second time, but I got bashed last week for taking the Packers over the Cardinals and the Saints over the, the box, but it's whatever. <laughs> so my upset is going to be the Texans over the Dolphins. Look, I think the Dolphins are just an inferior. I don't think they're inferior to the Texans, but they're just a terrible team. Uh, Texans are a terrible team, too, but – if they get Tyrod back, I think Tyrod's going to be able to elevate them to victory. I'm a big believer in Tyrod. I think he's a solid quarterback. Um, and I thought they were playing fairly well before he went down in that Browns game. So credit to him. Um, you know, even if he doesn't come back, I think there's a chance Davis Mills could elevate them to victory, even though I'm not a big believer in him yet. I mean, we'll see how he develops. Um, I'll give him his time. But yeah, I don't think I don't think that the, the Dolphins are a great team. And I think the Texans are going to be able to pull this one out. I got you, fam. And with that being said, let's get to the highlight games of the week. We got some interesting ones, not quite the biggest heavy hitters, but some interesting ones this week. And let's get it started with the Packers at the Chiefs, bro. Going into the season, anyone would have thought this would have been a game of the week. But while the Packers have lived up to their expectations in the preseason, the Chiefs have very much fell down flat on their face. Just barely ecking out the win on Monday night versus the Giants. Meanwhile, the Packers coming off a huge win versus the Cards, who were previously undefeated. And now, bro, I got to be honest, even though it's at Arrowhead, I am taking the Packers. I just think they're on the roll right now. You always bring up, bring it up, the last dance for Aaron Rodgers. And I just, the Chiefs, man, do they know that they can throw checkdowns? Do they have checkdowns in their offense? Are they aware that when the safeties are sitting back 30 yards, it's probably not a good idea to throw the deep ball? Like, I just got too many questions, fam. It should be noted that the Chiefs also traded for Melvin Ingram at the trade deadline. So we'll see what that does. But I got the Packers here, bro. Yeah, I've also got the Packers. This, the Chiefs can't figure out how to attack the too high look. I mean, they're not running the ball nearly enough as, the, as, as, as much as they should. They're not, like you said, Patrick Mahomes is not making good decisions. He's holding on to the ball too long, trying to for, to wait for things to develop that just frankly aren't going to develop. He's He's been awful. I mean, the announcer said it last night when he got when he took the one sack, that was one of the best plays of the night for him. That's where Patrick Mahomes is at right now. And um, I mean, the Chiefs defense, quite frankly, for how much they've invested and how good Steve Spagnuolo usually is, despite the personnel he has, it's been 
and one one of the worst in like the past four or five years, to be honest. So I just think the Packers are going to go out there and, you know, while their defense might not be good, it's at least below average, which usually isn't a compliment, but when you're comparing to the chiefs defense, it is. So Packers, I think are going to take care of business and yeah, last dance, man. I mean, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to get the job done. I think this is going to be just a big year for him. So I think it continues. Hey man, he's John Wick coming for you. That was no costume. That was just him showing what he's going to do to the rest of the NFL. Exactly. That was great. <laughs> oh my goodness. Love that. Not as great as Jameis dancing on crutches, but. <laughs> the sports content you guys love. Anyway, <laughs> shout out Hunter, Matt on the dance floor. We go to our second highlight game, man. <laughs> Browns at Bengals, AFC North interdivision matchup. The Browns very nicked up at the moment. Baker is playing, but you can see that he is nowhere close to healthy and his injuries are holding him back without a doubt. The running back situation, Hunt is still out. Nick Chubb has returned, I believe, but he's still nicked up. Kind of a limited participant in most practices. Then on the other side, you got the Bengals coming off a loss to the Jets. The Jets, fam. So I'm interested to see. You lead us off here, man. Who you got? What's happening? Give me the breakdown. Yeah, so I'm picking this on the spot. I really don't know, to be honest. I feel like the Bengals are going to rebound, but at the same time, like, even with the injuries – you know, if the Browns can kind of just get back to what they do best, like that run scheme that they have, it's similar to Shanahan, but like that run scheme that fans can employ is like you you have a chance to win every game and control the time possession and um, keep that offense out of a rhythm. And I think that's how to do with the Bengals, how dynamic that bro chase connection is with how dynamic they are just all around. Um, I, I think that you've got to, you know, you've got to keep them off the field. So I am going to take the, the Browns go out on the limb here. Um, I feel like the Bengals are definitely the favorites, but I feel like the Browns kind of have more at stake right now. Like I think that the Browns, you know, if they lose this game, they fall below 500. And I think they really want to get above 500. And then, you know, once they continue to get healthier throughout the year, then they really start to turn it on. So um, whereas the Bengals, like, I'm not saying they don't have a lot to play for because if they lose, they fall to five and four and they want to kind of distinguish themselves and show, Hey, look, we're here to compete this year. And we are a legit team in the AFC. And look, even the Titans lost to the Jets this year, but I mean, I don't know why I just kind of, i maybe it's more just, I want the Browns to win because I want to make it more interesting down the stretch. But um, I feel like the Bengals should win, but I'm going to take the Browns and just go out on the limb. I got you. Hey, man, we call them gut feeling calls here for a reason. But that being said, I'm going to take the safe pick here. I'm going with the Bengals. They got the home field, like you mentioned. They're coming off an embarrassing loss to the Jets. I think they're going to bounce back big off that. Good teams always bounce back big off of bad losses. They typically do. That's the way it usually goes. And I believe in the Bengals this year. I'm going to take them over the Browns. And a big part of that really is, again, the Browns injuries, man. Baker... Baker isn't playing through injury right now. He's playing injured. And there is a difference. When you're playing through injury, the injury isn't really affecting your actual performance on the field. He's just playing injured. He looks like he is suffering out there and his play is terrible to be quite frank. So like, there's just no way to cover that up. Maybe Stefanski, if anyone can, it's Stefanski's run defense, but I'm taking the bank. Not run defense, run offense. Now, man, let's go to this last highlight game. You and me were debating this last position a little bit, but I think we settled on the right one for the week. This last highlight game, we got the Vikings at the Ravens. Now, with the Vikings, I'm never really sure what to make of them week to week. They lost in primetime versus the Cowgirls on Sunday. They just go up and down and up and down. Sometimes their offense is great. Sometimes it's terrible. Sometimes their defense is great. Sometimes it's terrible. Like, I don't really know. I have no idea what to make of the Vikings right now. They kind of sit in the same area as the Saints to me. And then on the other side, you got the Ravens coming off their bye, I believe, last week. Lamar Action Jackson still on a tear, literally covering up all of that team's mistakes. That defense still performs well, even with the numerous amount of injuries it has. And I got to be real. I was debating this, but I am going to take – I could regret this, but it's also a 1 p.m. game. Despite the Ravens being at home. Good note. Good note. Despite the Ravens being at home, I'm taking primetime Captain Kirk to get the dub here. I think the Ravens will come off the bye a little bit rusty. And, you know, maybe they come out rest and they absolutely whoop them. But I'm taking the Vikings. I'm going out on my gut feeling call here. I'm saying 1 p.m. Captain Kirk. 
and that Vikings offense will walk in and handle the Ravens, especially their wide receivers for the Vikings, will I think have a field day against the Ravens' very injured secondary. So we'll see how that goes. And man, I'm taking the Vikings. I, I, I mean, I think the Vikings have a good shot at winning this game. With again, they're another team like. You just have to ride the roller coaster with them. It's like Danny Green. Um, I mean, you know, I think that I think that the Vikings are going to have a good shot to to go out there and win this game with you know the way they play, but just the way they face planted against the backup quarterback on prime time. I mean, we you know we've seen that before as Eagles fans, but um, I mean the way they came out there and Mike Zimmer just I don't know if it was him or the offense coordinator just went so conservative on offense too, like roll outs that you know checking down to guys below the you know uh, in front of the line of scrimmage in the flat like nope. just not aggressive at all against a team like if you go out there and just put up three scores you win that game easily that Cowboys offense is going to catch up um you know well I should say with Cooper Rush but um props to him he handled the situation and you know managed the game but I mean the, the, I really think the Vikings just face planted on that Uh, And their defense, I don't think their defense is going to be able to contain Lamar. I think he's going to be able to get some some nice plays on the ground. Maybe they do. Mike's in around for a while, but I just think they don't have the guys there they need to execute. So I'm going to take the Ravens and be safe here. Um, But I, you know, the Vikings are that type of team that they really do pull out wins like this. And like, I like that you noted it's a 1 p.m. game. So that's right. You know, I have to look at the time slot game when it comes to Kirk Cousins. (laughs) Sure. Anyway. (laughs) Anyway. With that being said, man, we finish out this segment with the game of the week. We got the Titans at the Rams. The Titans obviously losing Derrick Henry for the next six to 10 weeks. I saw this as injury time frame, potentially season ending injury. I believe he broke some bone in his foot, some metatarsal or something. The fifth one, I think. Sorry, medical nerds. I know that crap. And we got the Rams, fam. The Rams are on a roll. They're stampeding. They just traded for Von Miller at the trade deadline as if Aaron Donald was not enough. Then on the offensive side, you see white Randy Moss, Cooper Cup doing his thing. Robert Woods being the rap, being the Robin to his Batman. You got guys like Van Jefferson, Deshaun Jackson playing as deep threats. Wow. Didn't, uh, didn't d just get cut? Oh, did he get they cut? Couldn't I trade him. Yeah, because I think they were going to cut him if they couldn't trade him at the deadline. Hate to see that. But my point yeah. being, that's Bring how good the Rams Philly. are right now. The d gets just straight out cut. That's how good they are right now. Offense, they're firing. Darrell Henderson, he's doing great. He has been very good for them the past few weeks. And obviously, I didn't have to say about Matthew Stafford. Homeboy is elite. He, he's an elite QB. Easy, easy. Don't even have to think twice about it. And then that defense we just mentioned is insane. Bro, I got to be honest. I think to me, home field for the Rams to whatever home field they have in Los Angeles. I don't know how much of a home field that is. I'm going to take the Rams. I just think they're on too high of a roll right now. Any game where you have Derrick Henry in, your team has a chance. But my point being, the Titans don't have. So I don't believe they have that chance this week. Yeah, I'm taking the Rams, bro. I just think the Titans are outmatched. So is this a Sunday night game? I think so. I think so. You go give you me your check analysis. I'll double quick? check that for you. I'll double check that for you. Well, that's that's really going to affect my pick here. Um, so, look, yeah, the Rams on paper are just the far better team, especially with no Derrick Henry in this matchup. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a tough game for the Titans. I mean, they're really going to be. I think their backs are against the wall without D Henry. And look, I mean, I know they just beat the Colts, but the Titans do not have an easy schedule the rest of the year. And um, you know, look, the Colts have got the Jets and the Jags the next couple of weeks. So if they win those two games, they go five and five. And then the Titans, you know, they lose this game and then lose. I don't know who they play the week after, but look, I mean, they're going to, they're going to definitely, the Colts are still going to have a really strong shot to win that division. It's between them and the Titans. I know the Titans beat them, but the, the Colts definitely have an easier road to finish up the rest of the year. They don't have a ton of easy games, but um, you know, if it's a Sunday night game, it Everything in me. Game. I did just double check. Okay. That. They all, there's always some weird crap that goes on, man. Like there's, I feel like the Sunday night games, like, yes, there's some blots, but like they always tend to be good games. Um, 
And I think the Titans are really going to be, I think they're going to find a way to be in it because while Derrick Henry is just a monster, I think they're still going to be able to um, establish the run. I, I think they can do that. You know, losing Derrick Henry, obviously you lose that dominant superstar factor where, you know, he can just go for an 80 yard touchdown or, um, he can get those extra five yards or 10 yards or 15 yards and drag defenders that your other guys can't, but doesn't mean your run game is not going to be successful at all. Um, you know, I could regret saying that, but I do think they have a couple guys in there that can get the job done. So I'm not taking the Titans. I- I'm going to take the Rams, but I think the Titans could hang in there in this game if they, if they play it the right way. So um, I was thinking about taking the Titans as a gut feeling, but I'm going to take the Rams. I got you fam. And with that, we close out this episode of Weekly Pick and Wednesday. Thank you all for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. We love hearing your guys' takes on all these games. And shout out, the channel's been growing insanely fast. Shout out to all you guys. We love you guys. And our watch hours especially. I think, Hunter, you were saying it in the chat. People who have so many more subscribers than us have, like, not even half the watch hours we have. You guys, our fan base, you guys are awesome. You guys are just awesome about tuning into the content we post. Love you guys. Have a good one. God bless you all. Peace.